Hey guys, it's Jessica and welcome back to the Sugar Crystal Kitchen. Since Halloween is right around the corner, I decided to make a themed treat this week. I took a twist on the traditional devil's food cake recipe and turned it into these adorable mini cakes. This dessert does take quite a while to put together, but it's sure to impress all your guests at your Halloween party, so let's get right into the recipe. Start off by sifting together two cups of all-purpose flour, half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of baking soda, a pinch of salt, and one cup of sugar into a big mixing bowl. This recipe actually makes much more cake than necessary for six mini cakes, so I would just half all the ingredients here. Next, in another bowl, whisk together all the wet ingredients, which will be two cups of milk, three quarters cup of vegetable oil, two eggs, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Usually, we use a cup of milk and a cup of hot coffee, but I didn't have any coffee on hand, so I substituted it with milk and it worked out just fine. Quickly give your dry ingredients a stir and form a small well in the center of it all. And we're just going to gradually stir in the wet ingredients into the dry until everything is well incorporated. It's okay to have a few lumps here and there, but just make sure not to overmix your cake batter or else you're going to end up with a dry cake. Here, I have already prepared my 9 by 13 inch cake pan by lining it with some parchment and spraying it down with cooking spray, and I'm just going to pour in my cake batter. Bake this off at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes, and this recipe actually makes two 9 by 13 inch cakes, but we're only going to need one. While the devil's food cake is baking, let's get started on our chocolate mousse. Begin by sprinkling one packet of gelatin over two tablespoons of water and set that aside and let it bloom for five minutes. Next, we're going to be making a chocolate ganache by microwaving together two thirds cup of semi-sweet chocolate and a quarter cup of heavy cream for 30 seconds. Give everything a stir and it becomes this beautifully thick and glossy ganache. Now to make our mousse light, we're also going to need some whipped cream. Whisk together one and a quarter cups of heavy cream and a quarter cup of granulated sugar until it reaches stiff peaks. Now take that bloom gelatin and pop it into the microwave to liquefy it and then stir it into the chocolate ganache. In order to maintain the air in our mousse, we're going to gently fold the chocolate ganache into the whipped cream. Here I just have a silicon dome mold that I bought off of Amazon. I'll leave the link to it in the description box below. And I'm just taking my spatula and scooping the mousse and filling it into each dome. I would suggest using a piping bag here instead because it would be neater. And also it would ensure that there aren't any air pockets in the mousse. Now take your offset spatula and smooth off the excess mousse to ensure that you get these nice smooth domes. Now just pop these into the freezer to set up for 2 hours. After the cake finished baking, I left it on a cooling rack to cool completely and then leveled it out with a serrated knife. Once you have completely leveled out your cake, take any round cutter about 2 inches in diameter that matches the size of the dome mold and cut out six rounds from your cake sheet. Would you just take a look at how fluffy and soft this devil's food cake is? Anyways, you should have six cake rounds and we're just going to put that aside while we work on the candy devil's horns. So to create the candy horns, I made my own mold by sifting lots of cornstarch into a cake pan and taking this devil's horn stamp I made from aluminum foil and pressing it into the cornstarch. Now in a small saucepan, combine together a quarter cup of granulated sugar and one tablespoon of water. Give it a quick stir so that the sugar dissolves into the water. Over medium-high heat, cook until the sugar begins to bubble. Swirling the pot to make sure everything is evenly heated. You don't want to stir anything here because it could cause the sugar to recrystallize and clump. And once the mixture starts to turn a deep golden color, you know the candy caramel is ready so take it off the stove. Stir in some red food coloring and while it's still hot, spoon the candy syrup into the mold. If the sugar hardens, don't worry, you can just place it back onto the stove and reheat it. Now the last component is the mirror glaze and just a heads up, this recipe also makes too much, so I would just have the ingredients. Begin by fluming two packets of gelatin in half a cup of cold water, give it a stir and set it aside. And now in a sauce pot, combine together a quarter cup of water, one cup of sugar, and half a cup of light corn syrup. 
Give everything a stir and over medium low heat, let it bubble away for seven to eight minutes. At this point, you can take it off the stove and stir in your bloom gelatin as well as a half cup of sweetened condensed milk. Here I have 8 ounces of white chocolate chips and I'm just going to pour the hot sugar syrup over them and let that sit for about 2 minutes before going in with a hand blender. You could just use a whisk and strain the mixture after, but the hand blender just ensures that you get a very smooth glaze because it blends away all the air bubbles. Afterwards, just in case there are any clumps that might not have been blended up, pass the glaze through a sieve. Gradually stir through some red food coloring until you get your desired color. Let the glaze cool to about 90 to 94 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius before using. While the glaze was cooling down, I made some other preparations. First, I took my chocolate mousse domes out of the fridge and plopped them out. And I also prepared a baking pan by lining it with some parchment and placing a few shot glasses on it so I have somewhere to put my mousse domes on when I glaze. Once your glaze has reached the proper temperature, we can just plop on our mousse domes onto those shot glasses and begin to glaze. Okay, so for the glazing, which is of course everyone's favorite part because it's so satisfying to watch, we have to make sure our domes get full proper coverage. So by doing that, we need to glaze our domes in circular motions, making sure all the edges are evenly coated. After the first coat sets, we're going to go in for a second coat just to make sure that the extra layer of glaze will make our red more opaque. Now I'm going to show you guys round two of glazing my other three mousse domes because, of course, this is everyone's favorite part, right? Now after two layers of the glaze, we're going to let that sit for a while and let those drips come off and solidify. And once the glaze has set, we're just going to go in with a butter knife or offset spatula and clean up those edges. At this point, it's safe to take our offset spatula and transfer those glazed chocolate mousse domes onto our cake discs. And last but not least, we're going to grab those candy horns that we set aside earlier and just stick them into the sides of the most stones. And that is our finished mini devil's food cake entremets. I am super happy with how cute and impressive these turned out. The devil's food cake is spongy and moist and pairs perfectly with that light chocolate mousse. I hope you all have a wonderful Halloween and let me know if any of you daredevils do dare to take on this dessert. Haha, <laughs> get it? Okay, that was cringy. Anyways, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this week's video and I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!